Hello, I'm Councilman Bishop Daru Bryant. I'm Councilman for District 5 of Clinton, North Carolina. And we're here today in this forum with the Clinton Police Department. Um, I have received uh, various calls and emails concerning you know, the different incidents that have taken place, not only within the district, but in the city as a whole. So we wanna use this forum to inquire from our police department so uh, I'm thankful that we have Chief Edwards here, as well as some of his staff, you know, to just answer a few questions that we have today. All right, I am Chief Edwards. I appreciate the opportunity uh, having us here. I would like to introduce the staff if we could, uh, starting uh, to the far right here is Lieutenant Adrian Matthews. He is our uh, administrative lieutenant uh, in charge of our records and training and uh, such. Next to me, uh, closest to the right, is Assistant Chief Anthony Davis. He runs the day-to-day -day operations of the, of the Clinton Police Department. Over here to my immediate left here is Lieutenant Robbie King. He's over our operations division. The officers that you see in uniform, that's, he commands uh, that team. And then next to him is Lieutenant Stokes McCoy, and he is over our services division, which is our investigations and our special operations. The Clinton Police Department is a full service law enforcement agency. We do a variety of services in the city uh, from basically responding and doing general patrols with our uniform patrol officers to major investigations through our crime, um, through our crime detectives and our narcotics detectives. We also provide school resource officers to the uh, city schools and as a part of all of our operations, we do a lot of outreach either through the schools or through our neighborhood improvement team or even the patrol teams. Uh, we'll take on projects that allow us to do uh, community outreach. Uh, so one of the first questions in regard to the shootings, uh, there have been several shootings that have been taking place in the past couple of weeks. And so I just want to understand if these are random incidents, are they drug related? Uh, what, is it, what is the source of these shootings? I appreciate you asking that question. These incidents are not random incidents. What we're finding is that the individuals who are involved, these individuals know one another. They've got some kind of ongoing dispute uh, between uh, the families or the individuals. And a lot of times they're involved in some kind of criminal, uh, criminal groups or other related criminal activities. And there may be some drugs, but generally what we're finding is this is individuals who actually know each other and are involved in criminal, uh, other criminal activities. Okay, so let me just understand this as well, because, you know, when you're talking about the shootings, you know, what actions, you know, are being taken concerning these recent events? Some of the actions we're taking is, first we want everyone to know that we actively investigate every one of these incidents. Once we've started that investigation, one of the things we do is the folks that are involved, we check out not just them, the people they hang out with and where they hang out. And we take all that data and correlate it and a lot of times we will actually increase our patrols, we'll increase manpower on the road to ensure that we can try and come to a positive end with these incidents. Okay, uh, the police department, we look at a lot of data and we, we, we put our staff in the areas where we're having high crime uh, to deter this crime. Uh, we listen to citizens, we, we talk with citizens and get their input and our ultimate goal for the police department is to get rid of, of the crime in the areas. Yeah, I'd like to add to what Lieutenant King was saying because one of the things that we do is we, when we gather this data and we're hearing these um, citizen concerns and they're being brought to us, that information is given to our patrol teams and even our neighborhood improvement team, and they use it to go out in their daily operations. So they'll set up checking stations, you'll see checkpoints, they'll be doing uh, more proactive traffic stops in these areas, and they're actually targeting the areas where these crimes or these uh, criminal groups are actually hanging out at. Okay. And they actually take that information and they use it in a proactive manner uh, every day as they're, um, as they're responding to, to whatever the citizen concerns are. Right, Chief, if, if I can add, um, when, when the patrol teams and the neighborhood, team, uh, neighborhood improvement team is out in these areas, uh, they do these checkpoints, uh, they do discover uh, individuals with warrants on them, uh, they do discover that these individuals are in possession of firearms, um, they do get drunk drivers off the street. 
so that's one of the reasons why you see an increase in check-in stations and traffic stops in, in these areas. So uh, has there been an increase in drug activity within our area? We are seeing more drug-related and alcohol offenses in the communities. Um, one reason for this is the proactive enforcement that the officers are taking is nearly up 65% compared to past years. Um, this shows that officers are being more proactive in their enforcement and also reactive to the citizen concerns. Our main focus is also quality of life, which is where we use this crime data to instill intelligence-led strategies within these communities to deter crime or simply just move it out of the area. So let me ask you this, what, what is it that, as citizens or residents in the community, what else can be done? What is it that we as citizens can do to help law enforcement to apprehend, you know, or close some of these cases, you know, uh, or how is it that we could, you know, give information without, you know, causing some sort of retaliation, you know, uh, to ourselves or to those in our community? Like uh, Assistant Chief Davis was saying, that intelligence-led policing is uh, only helped by the community when they um, tell us their concerns and also uh, um, give us tips um, for crimes that are being committed. Um, some of the ways that they've been actually really good with giving tips is uh, through TIP411, um, through the city's website. Uh, you can do it online. You can um, call the police department anonymously. Uh, those various ways definitely help uh, with being able to solve those crimes and know where those crimes are uh, happening throughout the city, and that way we can be responsive to citizens' needs. Mm -hmm. Okay. We have an outstanding community, and we have great community partners. The biggest thing we ask of our community is to communicate with us. When crimes occur, incidents occur, they're not happy about something. They need to communicate with us. We rely on the community to give us the information that we need to take care of these problems. So the biggest thing that I can say is communicate with us. We've given you different ways earlier how to communicate with us. You can call us. We'll meet you. It doesn't have to be at the police department. You can call us, tip 411, however you want to do it. Wave an officer down. Just communicate with us. We do understand that uh, citizens are kind of concerned when they're trying to reach out to the police. Whatever their reason is, they may be scared about something. And that's the reason that we have this anonymous tip line, the tip 411 service. And we want to assure people that that actually is an anonymous service. That service is run by a third party vendor that's not even in our state. So when the uh, person texts that tip or uses the app, it goes through that third party vendor and that person's information or phone number is put into a code and then that is sent to us. So all we see is a simple little code number it has nothing to do with the person's identity or anything else. The, uh, the system is completely anonymous for, for citizens who may be concerned about that. Some of the other ways that you can get in touch with us is like Lieutenant, Lieutenant McCoy said, is if you see an officer, go ahead and approach them. If you don't feel comfortable with that, um, officers are at different places uh, in the city. One of the um, places is we have a substation at uh, Dogwood Circle, and you can come by there. Um, there's an officer or a detective uh, usually um, there. And also there is an on-duty commander, myself or the other two lieutenants, are there on Thursdays. Um, feel free to come by, share your concerns, no matter how small, because one of the things we want to work on are not only crimes, but quality of life issues. I just want to add to what Lieutenant Matthews was saying about the substation. Uh, the times that officers can be reached, detectives are there on Wednesday afternoons from 4 to 6 p.m., and command staff are available from Thursday 9 to 11 a.m. Um, feel free to come out and speak to us. We'd love to hear your concerns in the community. Also, going back to the tip 411, if you're making those anonymous tips, um, just to clear some, uh, maybe some misinformation out there, you will not be a witness to the case and will not have to go to court. That is completely anonymous. Um, that is some misinformation that may be out there. So if you're, if you're tipping us on tip 411 and we got that information, 
you will not have to go to court as a witness. Um, also, I've got to understand that policing at its root is a shared concept between the police department and the community. Um, we've got to work together um, to face the challenges we're facing today and those we'll face in the future. Um, many problems are societal and we simply can't police those like we did in the 1990s. Um, we have to take a holistic approach and we have to do it um, together as one community. So communicate with us and we look forward to hearing from you. As a result of you know these these various incidents, you know uh, the concern I guess that many of those in the community have, you know, are we at a point where there is an increased amount of crime taking place in reference or in relation to other years, or it just appears to be that way because you know uh, it, it, we haven't seen much activity towards the end of last year. This is a really good question. This is something I was preparing to present to the city council, and I hope to have a report that addresses this in the April uh, city council meeting um, that talks about the crime and we do some yearly comparisons and things like that. Overall, as we look at the year 2020, we are uh, pretty close to our five-year averages on crime. Now, we have seen a slight uh, increase in violent crime or persons against crime that includes both violent crime and even domestic crimes, and domestics has gone up uh, pretty notably, not just for our region, but, uh, but across the state. As we're looking at, we just, we do monthly reports, and those monthly reports is what we use in our operations, and we just finished the February reports, and one of the things that, that we highlight from, from those is from the January and February of 2021, our crime is significantly down from the same period in 20. 20. And another interesting fact is the fact that for the entire year of 2020, the officers of the Clinton Police Department took 60 guns off the street. In just the first two months of 2021, January and February, we've already taken 22 guns off the street. So it really says a lot about their activity and the work that they're doing. But we are, uh, right now we're seeing some of the crime down, but if we look at the 2020 overall, there is a slight increase in, in certain areas. Okay, well let's change the subject a little bit. You know, as we consider COVID, and many at this point, you know, have been restless, uh, they've been, you know, home, uh, there's been a lot of restrictions when it comes to restaurants, and. And there's questions regarding, you know, where, you know, people can go. When they go, do they have to wear a mask? You know, uh, are there laws right now that, you know, requiring the citizens to wear masks as we go out? Well, we know it's been a little bit confusion, uh, confusing um, with the laws regarding mask use. Mm -hmm. So masks are still required in North Carolina. But we uh, are working with businesses and managers um, every day to help them understand what the rules are and what we ask from the public is that they voluntarily comply uh, with the North Carolina mass mandate. Okay, so what about gatherings? You know, um, there are those that go to houses of worship um, or even, like I said, when we talk about restaurants or, you know, even if they want to have events in the park, you know, are there laws that you know, prevent certain gatherings at this point or the amount of people in gatherings in relation to COVID-19? There actually has been some changes uh, with the gatherings and the gathering numbers. Uh, this too can be a little bit uh, confusing because it depends on what kind of events you've got, the locations you're going to, and things like that. The best thing that we can do from the police department's perspective is just to encourage citizens to, to look at the CDC's website or DHHS or even the local uh, health department has some information on there and actually Clinton residents the best place to go is go to the uh, City of Clinton website City of Clinton NC look on there and we actually provide links to all of those other sources so it's kind of one-stop shopping and you can get all the information and make sure that you're getting the best information that's available at that time okay I like to speak on behalf of diversity um, with all the, the racial conflict and the issues we see nationwide, we've been fortunate to not, you know, see those kind of issues, you know, here in this community. 
Um, however, we do understand there is that necessity of building trust and confidence, public relation, and building community. Uh, what efforts have been made on behalf of the Clinton Police Department in regards to diversity? Our agency has a strong history uh, dealing with the community. Uh, Pre-COVID, uh, before 2020, uh, we were averaging around 40 events a year uh, being out in, the, in our community. Uh, some of the events that we host is the Latino Community Meeting, a National Night Out, and our Police Youth Camp. And one of our missions here at the Police Department is to uh, serve all diversity in our communities and be a, a positive uh, source for the, the citizens that we uh, serve. Um, some of the efforts that have been undertaken by the police department to bring uh, a more diverse group of officers, um, first thing I would like to say is that the police department is more diverse um, than it's ever been in the past 15 to 20 years. Um, just this past year, we hired four minorities. Um, two of them are uh, minority females, and we also hired a military um, veteran. There are staffing shortages uh, across the state and across the nation in law enforcement. We're competing with larger agencies um, offering higher sal salaries. Um, some of the things that we're doing at the Clinton Police Department to adjust for this is we've uh, come up with a cadet program where we hope, hopefully, we'll be able to um, get some of these uh, candidates, uh, pay them while they attend college or VLET. Uh, those are some of the um, ways that we're trying to combat uh, these uh, shortages. But one of the best uh, recruitment tools that we have at the Clinton Police Department is our other officers. Um, the way they're recruited is we have um, a lot of officers that have uh, ties to the BLET program. Those officers see um, the Clinton Police officers and want to be, um, want to join the Clinton Police Department. Okay, so with that said, uh, had there been any additional training that has been done with staff or, you know, newly recruited officers that help them to understand and deal with people, you know, that come from different backgrounds or different ethnic origins? There actually is. Every year we do some type of training that is focused on uh, sensitivity training is minority or ethnic uh, sensitivity, and we incorporate that as part of our in-service. Um, we also feel that being a part of an accredited agency, we're constantly looking at the best national standards, and we're applying those things in not only our policies, but our practices, and we're developing in all avenues of our, our training. Um, one of the things that we looked at a few years back was the mental health response because that's been a hot topic across the nation and the Clinton Police Department has been a leader in our not only our region but even the state in our mental health response and the mental health training that includes de-escalation because we've incorporated those uh, those aspects into our training and again into our policies and our practices and we currently are in between about 75 and 100 percent I think just a year ago we had 100 percent uh, crisis intervention team trained officers, certified officers uh, and employees within the department. Um, and we put that out. It's not just a matter of going to training. You've got to incorporate these things into the culture of the department because if this uh, respect and understanding of the diverse community that you're serving isn't uh, built into the, the culture of your department, training means nothing. Well, it appears since, you know, COVID, uh, people are looking at different options concerning uh, occupation or career. And I think now more than ever, people realize and understand the importance of essential workers. And when I consider the police department, um, I'm sure there are those that are wondering if you are hiring even right now with everything that's going on. Yes, sir, we are currently hiring, and what we're looking for in a candidate is diverse individuals who are ready to share our values and who look forward to the challenges of serving a small community like Clinton. And one thing, we'll, we will be looking some good candidates for our cadet program that we're going to get started soon.
if someone's interested in becoming a police officer, uh, they have no training whatsoever, what are their steps or what do they need to do so that they can be considered, you know, when there is an opening in your department as an officer? So the steps um, that someone would take to the first step to becoming a police officer is they have to have basic law enforcement training, uh, known to many as BLET. Um, Samson has an excellent BLET program right here in Clinton. Um, and the Clinton Police Department uh, would provide sponsorships to attend the uh, BLET program. Um, there is no cost associated with the BLET program other than books um, and maybe fees that the college um, charges. Um, and you would be responsible for transportation, um, things like that. If someone is interested in BLET, they can contact me um, or Assistant Chief Davis at the police department. I will look forward to talking to them and uh, walking through, through the steps of being able to um, become a police officer. If you're, if you're interested in a job in law enforcement and you have uh, some issues that you, you may want to come in and discuss with us about your background, uh, we will be glad to sit down with you, look at everything, and try to get you on the, the right track to get into the basic law enforcement program. So again, I'd like to thank you for, for allowing us all this opportunity and you know for uh, the command staff to be here and sharing this conversation with the community because that's one thing that uh, Lieutenant King touched on earlier is that in 2020, COVID kind of set us back. And as we're sitting here and we're regrouping in 2020 and we're trying to move forward um, with our new vision is the center of what we're trying to do as we're moving forward is communication, partnership, and being responsive. It's kind of our CPR to re reigniting the, the community outreach. Um, and that's where we need to be moving. And we've got to do it collectively as not just the police department, but with the community. So once again, I'm Bishop Daru Bryant, uh, Councilman here at District 5 of Clinton, North Carolina, and I thank you for taking the opportunity to watch this forum uh, as a public service announcement, just wanting to remind the community that in spite of everything that has taken place in the past several months, uh, that here in the city we are concerned with your well-being, um, that you're not forgotten and that you have a department here that is doing all that they can you know to make sure that you are having a safe and a peaceful environment to call home all right take care god bless you